Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Weez. Today we're getting into Assassin's Creed 2. I turn Assassin's Creed games into TV shows. So we're going to be watching Assassin's Creed 2. In the previous episode, we watched Assassin's Creed Lineage, which is the prequel short film to the life of Ezio, to the Ezio trilogy. So Assassin's Creed 2 is season 2, and it has, I believe it has 10 episodes. And so we're going to get into the first episode. I believe it's about 40 minutes or so. And I am going to be pausing and talking about this and that. Uh, if you don't want to watch it interrupted, you can watch it uninterrupted on the channel. So let's get right into it. Assassin's Creed 2, Episode 1. My name is Desmond Miles. I'm a prisoner of war. A war I never knew existed. Waged by two groups I never thought were real. Templars and assassins. The Animus showed me the truth. The things I've seen, the things I've been. A thousand years of history flowing through my veins, brought to life by this machine. They're using it. Using me to search for something call it the apple it's an artifact one of many so-called pieces of eden templars collect them. it's how they stay in power and if the templars get their hands on another one everything will change they want to make us all their slaves when they first brought me here i was afraid of what would happen if i tried to fight back now now i'm afraid of what will happen if i don't but i can't do it alone Maybe I don't have to. I met someone. Her name is Lucy. I think she's on my side. And she's gone now. She was taken away by that bastard Warren Vidic and his Templar masters. I don't know what will happen to her, or what'll happen to me. All I know is I need to get out of here. And I need to do it soon. My name is Desmond Miles, and this is my story. So right away, they do an almost two minute intro to Assassin's Creed 2, telling you everything that's happened so far, because of course, in Assassin's Creed 1, you're playing as Altair most of the time, and then all of a sudden in Assassin's Creed 2, you're not playing as Altair anymore. So I don't think you actually have to play Assassin's Creed 1, because throughout the Ezio trilogy, they do talk about Altair and everything that happened with Masyaf and the Templar order and everything so you don't really need to play the first one anyway let's keep going here we have to go lucy where have you been why did they now get in what's with the blood are you okay look we have maybe 10 minutes maybe before they figure out what i've done if we're not out of here and on the road before then... Wait, we're leaving? Desmond, I promise I'll answer all of your questions. Later. But right now, I need you to just shut up and do what I say. So please, get in the Animus. All right. Notice they tease the, the subject 16. Kind of make you curious, you know, that there was someone before Desmond. June 24th, Ezio's birthday. Oh, my love, me dispiace, I, I was at the bank when they told me. Did I miss it? Am I too late? Give him here. Giovanni. Shh, my love. It will be all right. 
più sei un auditore, sei un combattente. Perciò combatti. Listen to him. A fine set of lungs. It's so cool that you get to see, you literally get to see Ezio's life from the day he was born to the day he dies. It is seriously such a well-written story all the way through. What shall we call him, my love? Ezio. Ezio Auditore da Firenze. Get up. Let's go. Yeah, well, I'm gonna need a second. There isn't time, Desmond. We have to leave. Stay close. Hey! You're not supposed to be up here! Open this door! I'm calling it in! There's been a breach in the research. Desmond, That's over what? here! Back up from Fancy. There they are! Don't let them get away! <laughs> 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 So this is the first time we actually see Lucy fight and she clearly has training. There's there's no way she doesn't have training. So she's not just she's a field assassin. She's not a Sean Hastings. She's an assassin that's in the field for sure. This place. What about the cameras? I rigged them to loop old footage. How do you think I managed to hide all your nighttime snooping from Abstergo? You're good. So I've been told. But they're on to us now. We need to hurry. We need to get to that elevator on the other side of the room. Follow my lead, but keep an eye out for security. I'd rather avoid a fight. Is that an animus? Stay with me. What the? How many of them are there? Hold on. Is it animuses or animi? I thought this card would work. Must be on a separate system, and I don't have the code. Wait. Shit. Oh, come on. How did you do that? I don't know. So that's also the first time that Desmond experiences the bleeding, or not the bleeding effect, sorry, the eagle vision. I guess it is the first time he experienced the bleeding effect because ego vision would be a part of that. And he's about to experience some more bleeding effect where he fights for the first time. Let's go. It's always something. What was that in the Animus? Subject 16? Ezio? Audi? Audi something? I think we've been wrong all along. That's why we need to get out of here. Vidic and the Templars, they're only part of the problem. What do you mean? I'll explain when we get there. Get where? So I remember filming this several times because at first I did it without Desmond taking any hits and I was like, I don't think, I don't, I think you should take a hit or two just because he's, at this point he's had no actual training. He's just got the bleeding effect. He's just running on pure bleeding bleeding effect and adrenaline but then I also wanted to make it look like him and Lucy were kind of fighting together and so I, I did it a few times and then this is eventually what I what I chose to stick with
Get in. You're joking. It's for your own protection. Oh, man. We're almost there. Thanks for that. It was great. Shoving the trunk, bouncing around. Loved this it. way. Gonna tell me what's going on now? There was a reason for the escape, Desmond. Figures. We need your help. For what? Another treasure hunt through time? Abstergo's gonna replace their Apple of Eden. The map your ancestor found guarantees it. The other assassins... They'll do what they can, where they can, but... What? What is it? We're losing this war, Desmond. The Templars are too powerful. And every day, more of us die. I still don't see how I fit into things. We're going to train you. Turn you into one of us. What? No. No, you've seen me in action. I'm no good at this, and even if I was, it would take months. Years, even. No. Not with the Animus. Not with the bleeding effect. But I'm just one guy. Sometimes, that's all you need. So that's why you found him. My ancestor. What was his name? Ezio? If you can follow in his footsteps, you'll learn everything he did, just like he did. Look, there's more to it than that, but it'll have to wait. Trust me, okay? All right, I'm in. Tell me what you need. Really? You're sure? I thought you'd be happy about this. Sorry, I'm just a little surprised. I spent the whole ride over here figuring out how I was going to convince you to do this. Save it. After what those Templar bastards put me through, I'm ready, willing, and able. Thank you. Lucy! So come to think of it, there's always this kind of back and forth argument about which assassin is the greatest assassin. It would probably be Desmond. Because of the bleeding effect, he would have learnt the skills of Altair, all of Ezio's skills, not all of Altair's skills. Let's see, but Ezio, Ezio didn't have kids till he was like 50. So Desmond got a lot more of Ezio's life than Altair. Because Altair, I believe, had kids younger. And so, like I talked about, the, the memories stop when... At, at conception so it would and then obviously Connor Desmond also experiences Connor's life actually I don't know when Connor obviously Connor had kids at some point but De Desmond ends up dying before he actually fully relives of all of Connor's memories so we could probably get another Connor game players like William Miles and have like a Connor game could be good actually cuz I don't I don't I'm not aware of all the things Connor I believe Connor traveled to France after the after the American Revolution and all that happened in Assassin's Creed 3 it would be interesting to to go back into that period and see what Connor got up to it would be cool if Connor ends up killing Shay at a much later date. Somehow those paths collide again. That would be cool. I would actually, I would be into that. As long as it's not made for modern audiences, I'd be into that. You made it. God, it's been so long. Seven years. Can you believe it? Indeed. Welcome back. Ah, so this must be the infamous Subject 17. Desmond Miles, was it? Who are you? I'm sorry, where are my manners? I'm Sean Hastings. This is Rebecca Crane. Nice to meet you, Desmond. Right, well, it's been lovely chatting, but if you don't mind, Desmond, it's best we get straight to work. Time is precious. Doubly so these days. We've got everything set up and ready, Lucy. Just say the word and we'll get going. Here, I brought you something. A parting gift from Abstergo. Whoa! The memory core! This is amazing. With their data, things are going to go a lot faster. I'll get to work on merging the code. So this is another thing that I like about the writing. 
from one game to the next. So obviously, from Assassin's Creed 1 to Assassin's Creed 2, it's a pretty big bump up as far as graphics and gameplay and everything. And for them to explain away some of that aspect by writing in an upgrade, right? It just, like, the Animus gets an upgrade and so then everything, like, looks and feels better. It's 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 kind of cool to add that into the story writing to kind of explain the upgrade. Because it's an obvious upgrade and the Animus looks different and everything. So... What's all this stuff for? This stuff, Desmond. Oh, this stuff is nothing special, really, this stuff. It's just the stuff that keeps our entire operation from falling apart, really. It requires a great deal of concentration to keep it all moving, so you'll forgive me if I don't have time to play meet and greet. Sean's in charge of maintaining our knowledge archives. It's like a digital library. He'll be riding shotgun with me while you're in the Animus. So if you come across anything of note, people, places, events, etc., He'll create database entries you can consult for additional information. Yeah, it's not just databases, though. I also provide tactical support for the other assassins. You know, Desmond, the ones who are out there, actually doing stuff, risking their lives, little things like that. Hey, Desmond, what's up? Just wondering what your role is in all this. I take care of Baby. It's my job to keep her up and running. Baby? You mean the Animus? Actually, I prefer Animus 2.0, since... That's something I never understood about the Animus in the first game. It's like a piece of metal and glass or something, I'm not sure, but it looks incredibly uncomfortable. And Desmond's in there for hours at a time. I don't understand how... I mean, it's the most uncomfortable thing. And then you look at this, it looks more like a dentist chair, which is very way more comfortable. Other than the headrest, which looks pretty hard... For your head to rest on. This baby's twice as awesome as anything you'll find at Abstergo. The Templars might have deeper pockets than us, but they've got no ambition, no passion, no competitive edge. That's why, even with all their resources, anything they can do, I can do better. Faster, too. Anyway, take a seat when you're ready, and we can get started. I just need to make a few more adjustments. Hey, listen. I just wanted to say thank you. And, uh, I'm sorry. Sorry? Yeah, you know, before. Everything at Abstergo. It was just... I wasn't ready. It's okay. No. Going through all that. Knowing that the Templars still exist. What they're planning. What's done is done, Desmond. You're here now, and that's what matters. Lucy, I've been seeing things. Symbols in my bedroom. The code on the keypad. So, one thing's for sure, they definitely didn't fix Desmond's neck from the first game to the second one. His neck is literally the thickness of his head. Just like Altair. It's from the bleeding effect. You're taking on more than your ancestors' memories. You're taking on their skills, too. In this case, eagle vision. Skill? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but people with big necks just look stupid. I think it's because it makes their head look smaller than it actually is. You're more receptive now. So if all goes well, <laughs> everything Ezio learns in the Animus, you'll learn too. You really think this will work? That I'll become an assassin? You already are an assassin. You'll just be better at it. Yeah, hopefully much better at it. I mean, seriously, I saw the tapes from Abstergo. You didn't even try and escape. What a dick. So, how does this work? Of course. Deep breath. Ah! Oh, what are you, a tiny child? Sean! Well... Here we go. What about that one? Oh, she... Also, before I get into the rest of this, so... In Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, there are kind of flashback memory missions. They're missions, but they're, they're memories you flash back to of uh, 1476 in Florence. And it's of Ezio and Christina. But it all happens during the time period of Assassin's Creed 2, not Brotherhood. 
So I figured I would go forward into Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, play the Christina missions, and then take those and put them in their rightful timeline within Assassin's Creed 2. I just felt it made way more sense to do that because they they add so much more to the story in Assassin's Creed 2 and pretty much they do nothing for Brotherhood because originally I was like I'm not going to put these in Brotherhood. It doesn't it's just flashbacks and me personally I hate flashbacks. So, I wasn't going to put this in Brotherhood. And then I figured why not just slot it in take the flashbacks and instead of them being flashbacks slot it into the timeline within Assassin's Creed 2 so that they're not flashbacks they're actually just part of the Assassin's Creed 2 story so I did that and I actually I'm glad I did because it worked out really well he is beautiful okay then go talk to her just like that talk about what it doesn't matter see little brother most men are so afraid of beautiful girls that anyone who actually talks to them has an advantage. Just make it up as you go. It, it also, it doesn't just show Ezio's relationship with Christina, but it gives more context to his relationship with his brother. How his, his older brother was like a, you know, encourage him to go after the pretty girls and stuff. It's it's It shows more relationship cause, because in Assassin's Creed 2, it doesn't... Spoiler alert, y your brothers get killed er er very early on in the game. And so you don't really get to experience much of what they were like. And so these flashbacks are great for that purpose also. What? What? Why are you just standing there? Oh, uh, um, because I wanted to ask you something, which is, what's your name? Not one you'll ever need to make use of. That's better. I wasn't ready. I was planning on being really charming and funny, and I just have a second chance. <laughs> oh, well. Ezio, all is not lost. You made her smile. She will remember you now. No, I can still fix these. I'll follow her ways. This also kind of gets creepy, where he's following her home. But I guess it is lucky he, he does follow her home. I told you. I it also gives more context to Fieri and Ezio's feud because their families have always had beef and it, it it makes you realize it's not just families like he was going after his girl and everything. So they it it gives far more context to the feud between between the two. I'm not interested. See. But I am. Get in line. I think not, amore mio. I've decided I'm tired of waiting for you to open your legs on your own. Cane rognoso. What do you want here? This has nothing to do with you. Nice to see you too, Vieri. I think you're disturbing this young lady's day. Shut your mouth. I'll kill you. <laughs> Why am I not surprised to find you forcing yourself on a nice girl? Just like your father's bank treats Firenze. Fool! Your father is the one who needs to learn a lesson. You pot here all mouth and no fist. We've been slandering my family's name around this town for too long. You will pay for interfering. Your whole family will. Thank you. That was very kind of you. Are you alright? I am now. You asked for my name earlier. It's Cristina. Piacere, Cristina. I'm Ezio. Well, Ezio. Looks like you got yourself a second chance.
I always loved the way the Animus kind of builds the world out. It it makes you remember that you're actually Desmond. You're playing as Desmond, not Ezio. <laughs> it's such an Inception trip. Do you know what brings us here tonight? Mm. Honor. Viere de Pazzi slanders my family's name and forces his own miseries upon us. If we... Enough of your nonsense, Grullo! Buonasera, We were just talking about you. I'm surprised to see you here. I thought the Pazzi hired others to do their dirty work. It's your family that cries for guards when there's trouble, Cotardo. Afraid to handle things yourself? Your sister seemed quite satisfied with the handling I gave her earlier. Uccidetelo! <laughs> and there's the famous lip scar. <laughs> Behind you! Federico! What are you doing here? I wanted to see if baby brother had finally learned how to fight. Uh, and? <laughs> you have style. But endurance is what counts. Let's see how many of them you can ruin before they get the best of you. Hold on. What? We've almost won this. Your lip. Just a scratch. Let the doctor decide. It's not necessary. Besides, I've no money for this doctor of yours. <laughs> wasted it on women and wine, huh? I'd hardly call it wasted. <laughs> Give me some floorings then. Or have you done the same? <laughs> <laughs> Search them. <laughs> There's bound to be something in my pockets. That should be enough. Let's get out of here before the guards arrive. Ben trovato, doctor. Hmm. Fratelli auditori, why am I not surprised? You've made quite a mess of yourself, young man. It's nothing, really. You must help him. That pretty face is his only asset. A footy <laughs> It's, uh... This moment really makes you realize how much Ubisoft has changed. Where these two Chad brothers bantering and charisma off the wall. Like, like why can't we get good characters like this anymore? Because they're straight and white. Like, who cares? There we are. Grazie. <laughs> we should head home, Ezio. Father's sure to be wondering where we've gone. Yes. I'd rather avoid a lecture. Up for a little race, then? To where? Uh, roof of that church. Uno, due, tre! <coughs> Baby brother still has much to learn. I'm so sorry, Messere. I don't know what can be. <laughs> I almost feel bad about this. Oh, no shame and failure, brother.
Come on, then. This way. Where are you going? You'll see. This is like one of my favorite moments in all of Assassin's Creed 2. It is a good life we lead, brother. <sighs> the best. May it never change. And may it never change us. Oh man, that's so good. Especially with that song. It's one of the best soundtracks in gaming. Hands down. With just such good writing. Showing the bond between brothers. It's right. so good. Enough of that. We really should head home. Let's go. Wait. What? Ezio, let Christina sleep. There will be time enough for that later. Ah. Uh. <laughs> so it's Vieri. Better hide. Keep looking! He couldn't have gotten far! There's so much nostalgia in this for me. It's unreal. This game came out 15 years ago. No wonder there's so much nostalgia. Christina! Christina! Who's there? Me! Oh! It's you! I should have known. May I come in? Fine, but only for a minute. A minute is all I need. Indeed. <laughs> well, wait. Uh, <laughs> came out wrong. The writing was so much better back then. Come here. Oh, oh it's you. You had comedy, you had love stories. Christina! Christina! Svelia! Your tutor will be here soon. Come, my daughter. Is it really so terrible that... Figlio d'un cane! What is this? Perdonate, messere! Mi chiedo venia! I'll kill you! Oh, no, no. That's not necessary. Guards! Guards! Voglio la sua testa! Good morning, father. Come with me. Is something wrong? Do you think me blind and deaf, son? I know all about your fight with Vieri di Pazzi last night. And then, this little visit to Christina. Your behavior is unacceptable. It... It... It reminds me of myself when I was your age. I assume these misadventures won't interfere with your work today. No, padre. Avete la mia parola. I've prepared some documents here for Lorenzo Di Medici to review. I need them delivered to him. With haste, Father. Return to me when it's done. So I also mention... I, sh I honestly should have done it from the, the very beginning. Um, subtitles. I, I wasn't going to do subtitles. I figured... You know... You, just listen to what everyone's saying but then I realized because they're continually going back in time you you're non-stop actually hearing other languages all the time and if there's no subtitles people have no idea what's said and so by the request of a subscriber come Assassin's Creed Brotherhood I believe is when I started doing uh, subtitles so just if, in case anyone is wondering, because I guess some people want to read the shows they watch, but at the same time, 
there is a lot of other languages spoken throughout the Assassin's Creed franchise, so I figured it's probably best to to use subtitles. Ah, Ezio, ben trovato. How are you? Come sempre. I have a letter for Messer Lorenzo. I'll see that he receives it when he returns. Returns? They've gone to Villa Careggi, I'm afraid, and not expected back for at least another day. I'll let my father know. Up the good work, Biscuit all. <laughs> ah, hello, son. You remember my friend Uber? Good morning, Gonfaloniere Alberti. To you as well, young man. I trust you delivered the message. Si, padre, but it seems Lorenzo is out of town. Hmm, I did not anticipate this. What does it matter? So you wait another day or two. Listen, your mother and sister have been looking for you. I'll need you again in a little while, but for now, see if you can't help them. Are you sure? Yes, now if you'll excuse us. Good to see you, Ezio. Buongiorno, Ezio. Buongiorno a voi, madre. Come state? Sto bene. And you? Still recovering from last night? I have no idea what you're talking about. Of course not. Anyway, I have an errand to run. I'd like you to join me. Con piacere. Come. It's not far from here. I know about your fight with Vieri. What fight? Per piacere. Let's not play this game. He spoke ill of us. I could not allow him to continue. I'm sure he's having a hard time dealing with the accusations against his father. Francesco di Pazzi is many things, and none of them good. But even I never suspected he'd be capable of murder. What will happen to him? I imagine there will be a trial. Will father speak at it? He'll have to. He's the one with the evidence. Still, I wish there was another way. You've nothing to fear. Everyone wants justice done. It is an unfortunate state of affairs. Here we are. So something, another thing that I really like about the writing was actually so good. I mean, when you think about it, if you're going to write a story and you want as many people to relate to it as possible, you make it about family. Everyone has some kind of family, right? So it, the whole beginning of this game as you're getting to know Ezio, he's just spending time with his family. Which really endears him to the player or the viewer. It's it's actually kind of genius writing. Like you want you want the player to relate to the protagonist. To, to get them to like the protagonist. And they do it almost flawlessly in this game. Hello, Leonardo. Madonna Maria. This is my son, Ezio. Molto onorato. L'onore è mio. Let me go and fetch the paintings. I'll be right back. He's very talented. Imagino. Self-expression is vital to understanding and enjoying life. You should find an outlet. I have plenty of outlets. I meant besides vaginas. Mother. <laughs> Back to your house then. Si, si. Ezio, help Leonardo, will you? So Ezio, what do you do? He's been working for his father. Ah, you're to be a banker. For now. And you... 
art was it? Truth be told, it's been difficult for me to settle. Painting is nice, but I often feel like my work lacks, I don't know, a purpose. Does that make sense? I'd rather contribute more practically, more directly. Architecture, perhaps, or anatomy. I'm not content merely to capture the world. I want to change it. Oh, Leonardo. I have no doubt you'll go on to do great things. Ti ringrazio, Madonna. That's kind of you. It was nice to meet you, Ezio. I hope our paths cross again. Anch'io. Hey, Claudia. How are you? Bene. You shouldn't keep things from me. It's Duccio. What of him? I think he's been unfaithful. Who told you this? The other girls. I thought they were my friends. Harpies. You're better off without them. I loved him. No, Claudia. You only thought you did. He should suffer for what he's done. Wait here. I'll go have a word with him. It's beautiful. Nothing but the best for you, amore mio. But what of Claudia? I thought you'd been promised to her. The father said I could do much better than an auditore. Ah! Virbante! Come, let us walk a bit. Walk? I had something <laughs> else in mind. Oh, Duccio. Mm. Mm. Hey, glory to Porco! You insult my sister, parading around with this puttana. W what are you talking about? I saw the gift you gave her, or the things you said. Maybe your sister shouldn't be so stingy with her virtue. You broke her heart. Ha! And now I'm going to break your face. Away from my sister! Hey, Ezio! What are you doing out here, Petruccio? You should be in bed. I want those feathers. What for? It's a secret. If I get them for you, will you go back inside? Yes, I promise. So, I actually wasn't going to do this mission. And then I realized this is the only interaction you actually have with your little brother. So I figured I'd do a little bit of it to cut it in there. But there really isn't much about Patricio. This is pretty much it. Promised. Grazie, brother. You still haven't told me why you want these. I will. In time. So, I don't... I have no idea why he wanted those feathers. I'm not sure if there is a reason. If there is a reason, I just don't know about it. Let me know in the comments. Because I actually would like to know... I would like to know the whole purpose of... I mean, I, I get their collectibles and stuff, but what was the purpose of him collecting feathers? I don't, I don't understand that. Ezio, come in, son. I need these packages delivered to associates of mine in the city. I also need you to retrieve a message for me from a pigeon coop not too far from here. Va bene, I'll get it done. Come back here when you're finished. There are some things we need to discuss. And please, my son, Stay out of trouble. Hmm? I wonder if his dad was about to tell him about the whole assassin Yo, Giovanni's kid? No, idiota. He just happens to look exactly like the man. 
give it here. Don't worry, boy. We are not contagious. At least I'm not. <laughs> Delivery from Giovanni Alatore? Yes. Were you followed? No. Why would I be followed? Give me the baggage. Tell your father that they're moving tonight. He should as well. Who's moving? What's going on here? Wait! Come back! Explain yourself! So when I first played this game, I never actually noticed this, that it shows a bunch of guards running in a direction and that direction is actually your house. Not your house, but Ezio's house. And you actually, I, I, I'm pretty sure if you, when you grab a, a bird out of the cage, it automatically puts the camera up here and you watch the guys run across in the direction of Ezio's house. But if you move, then it takes the camera away and puts it back on Ezio. So I think I would just like grab it and then start to move. And so I never actually saw this, but I was able to capture it for, for the TV show. <laughs> Federico! Oh, Serezio! Thank God! What happened? Where is everyone? They took your father and brothers to the Palazzo della Signoria, to prison. And my mother, my sister. Ezio. Claudia. Are you alright? Yes, but mother... She's in shock. They... When she resisted... It's not safe here. Is there some place you can take them? Yes, yes, to my sisters. Good, do that. In the meantime, I'll go see my father. Be careful, Messer Ezio. The guards were looking for you as well. What is really cool is this building still exists today you can go I believe it's a tourist attraction today you can go look at it um, in in Florence Italy father what's happened took a bit of a beating but I'm all right what of your mother and sister? Safe now. Aneta took them. Yes. Wait. You knew this would happen? Not the way it did, and not this soon. Doesn't matter now. What do you mean? Explain! There is no time. Listen closely. Return to the house. In my office is a hidden door. Use your talent to find it. Beyond lies a chest. Take everything you find inside. Much of it may seem strange to you, but all of it is important. Do you understand? Yes. Good. Among the contents is a letter, and with it some documents. I need you to take these documents to Mr. Roberto. He was with me in the office this morning. The Gonfalonieri, I remember. Now please, tell me what's happening. Are the Pazzi behind this? There was a note for you at the prison. It said, go, Ezio. Go now. Have you? Man, the music for this game is so good.
I think I'm gonna learn this song on the piano. I'm gonna do it. It's so good. So there is Assassin's Creed 2, Episode 1. It's, uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to learn that song on the piano. At some point, I'm going to be uploading a video of me playing that song on the piano. Because it's, it's so dang good. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to this video. In the next video, we'll be watching episode 2, season 2, episode 2. But until then, chime in in the comments if you, if you have anything to say about what we're watching here. Uh, give your two cents in the comments. Also, share share the channel. I uh, I turn Assassin's Creed games into TV shows, and eventually I will. Once I've turned all the Assassin's Creed games into TV shows, I'll probably go on to turn other games that have really good stories into TV shows. I've always wanted to turn Watch Dogs One into a TV show because it it really does have a phenomenal story. But anyway, thanks for tuning in. I hope everyone has a good rest of your day. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye, everyone.